indeed. Peace and love, peace and love, and bountiful blessings to you all out there. Thank you again for tuning in, Free in the Minds. Another day, another episode, another day alive in life. Let's just take a moment and thank y'all for that. Another day alive in life, man. Above ground, man. Sowing seeds, moving forward, living our lives. You know, we have our minds, we have our health, we have our breath, we have our all these things. All these things, you know what I'm saying? But most importantly, we have another day. We have another day, another day to live, another day to breathe, another day to think, another day to pray, another day to repent, another day to consider ourselves, consider our lives, consider our relationships with everything. Our relationships with ourselves, our relationships with the Most High God, our relationships with the people in the world that we engage with, our relationships with our work, our relationships with our duty and how seriously are we taking these things, our relationships with our habits, our relationships with the things that we are addicted to, the things that we can't stop doing, you know what I mean? And some of the things that we wish we could stop doing that we can't stop doing, you know what I mean? So considering our relationships, man, Another day to consider ourselves, man, is always a beautiful thing. It's always a blessing, man. It's always an opportunity, man, to just get a deeper understanding of whatever it is that you're considering. So, um, or considering about yourself or the things around yourself. So, that being said, man, thank you. I'm very thankful for you. And uh, thank you for tuning in and for doing the work, you know what I'm saying, on ourselves. You know what I mean? As we see what's going on in the world, as we see the things that are happening in the world, Man, you know, the world needs more groundation. It, mean, it needs more people to bring more love and kindness, more compassion and mercy, and more understanding, supreme understanding, really. Being able to look at this thing and see what's really going on. Not getting caught up in our emotions, though at times we end up finding ourselves doing so. We have to pull back at those moments and reflect and, you know, being able to look at the whole board. What's going on in this world, man? It's um, heavy situations, man. We see all over every sector and that in itself is a whole thing so we ain't gonna go all into all of that what we're gonna end up doing is because of looking at the result of all these things and at the end of the day the result of life where we're going anyway the processes of life and parts of the processes of life is there's life and then there's death but we know that all things work for the greater good of all those who love the most high yah and therefore death too must be a good thing Death, too, must be a good thing. For what in the scripture it even talks about those going out early, for a person to go out at a very young age, it is a blessing to go on out. So that's a whole other script that we didn't even plan on going into. Ultimately, today we wanted to talk about where do you go when you die, when your time is up? What happens? How can we use these things to benefit ourselves and live a better life and be a better light, a beacon out here, be a beacon of light out here? So um, let's just dive right on in. Let's just dive right on in. So um, the first script that comes up, you know what I'm saying? As I'm thinking about, and as I was going through these, I was reading the scriptures, man. And you know, I just love reading scriptures. I love reading the scriptures, man. I just love reading scriptures. It's, not, it's just something about it. It's something about it, man. Studying the scriptures, reading the scriptures, read, it, it's, man, you, man, you know. And if you know, you know. It's like something that takes place within it. And it's like a, it's a man, it's, it's an opening man, it's, it's, that's, it's that real, that petal, the flowers, the petals opening up and the heart unfolding. The understanding as it opens up, the two, the understanding when you're approaching it, like most things when you approach it with an honest heart and an open heart, like an open mind, like really like, okay, praying for the understanding and really being open to the understanding. If it's going to even counter your understanding, you got to be willing to, you know, repent, submit, accept in turn we have to be able to like really address ourselves in the moment most honestly most honestly and be most honest regardless of our opinions regardless on what we think and we assume or what we our philosophies it, it's like man we see more and more day to day in the times of the now how like the illusions it, it, the illusions are massive and the illusions that are adopted as conclusions and truths it's 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 and it's forced and many of these illusions that have been adopted as conclusions forced on masses have become forced upon even at, at, at various levels it's 
beyond madness. So to maintain and stay sane in this world, I find myself heavily spending time in the scriptures, man, watching myself in scriptures, man, watching it, watching it, watching it, watching myself, watching my mind, watching my heart, watching my eyes, watching my spirit, man, watching my soul. I don't know if I can even watch my spirit. <laughs> the Most High does all that, and Most High does all this. Which this, you know what I mean, is doing all of this, you know what I mean? As well as giving me the energy to even present now, you know? So let's talk about this, man. Let's go right on into this. First thing we must do is we gotta look at, first thing we gotta look at is one must ask themselves, when we're talking about life and death and life after death, and we're talking about life in general, period, you know what I'm saying, coming in, where do we come from, all that, that's a whole other conversation too as well, but where we come from is back to where we're going. We're gonna get into a little bit of that too as well. This might be broken up into two parts, we'll see how that goes, but Either way it goes, or maybe we'll just section up in chapters, but either way it goes. First thing we must have to ask ourselves is, do I believe in the scriptures? Is what the scriptures saying is true, or do I just, nah, I don't know. Some of the stuff I believe, some of the stuff I don't believe, which ultimately means you don't necessarily believe the scriptures, you really just believe yourself. If you just believe in what you believe and what you don't believe, you toss it aside, you just believe in what you believe, period. And you ultimately just believe in yourself. So we have to ask ourselves, do I know more than God? Do I know better than God? Do I know better than this word? And one might say, how do you know that's even the word of God? That's a whole other build in itself. And we can go there eventually. We can go there. This is for sure. This is for sure. This is, man, shown and proven. So this history is actually, we can go back and check the records on this stuff. So this is, and at the same time, this is carrying itself out in the day to day. And if you understand what's going on in the day to day, as well as in what's happening here and the prophecies of the now, you'll see that this is like, you know, and a lot of this is written, you got this stuff coming from BC times into early AD times, man, and these things are playing out in the now. I mean, this is better, that's better than Nostradamus prediction, man. <laughs> Let's be honest, this is right on time. This is right on point. But even deeper than that, your spirit convicts it, your spirit attests to it, your spirit testifies to it. So as you read it and as you're going through it, you're gonna go through your battles, you're gonna go through your tug of wars or what have you, that's that journey of self. That's all this that we, these illusions that have been pressed upon us from the outside. So when we go into this word, it's do I believe it or not? You have to ask that question. And one of those most powerful scenes that helps you really get to a point of making that choice and seeing the reality of the situation and the real situation of what you're up against and what we're all up against is um, 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's start off at verse 19. Well, let's go on up. Let's start up at uh, 17. 1 Kings chapter 18, starting at verse 17. It says, And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Are ye he that troubles Yasharel? Oh, we were like, Are you he that troubles Yasharel? Oh, we're going to look troublemaker. And he answered, I have not troubled Yasharel, but you and your father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of Yahuwah. And you have followed Balin, balls, the balls, the devilish ways of the world, Babylon. Now, they had saw him coming up, and he said, you know, you that old troublemaker. Are you that one that troubles Israel? Are you the one that troubles Yahshua? Are you troubling us? Can you give us some trouble? Can you give us a hard time? And he answered, I have not troubled Yahshua. I ain't troubled Israel, but you have. You and your father's house have you all forsaken the commandments of the Most High Yah, and you have followed the ways of the devils, the balls, the Babylons. Now therefore, send and gather to me all Yasharel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of Asherah, 400. That's 850 folks right there. 850 false prophets which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Yasharel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? How long will you waver? If Yahuwah be Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They still were wavering. So they had to have the battle. 
and what proceeded from there is the battle, the battle of the prophets. Um, powerful moment. Continue reading the rest of that chapter, First Kings 18, chapter 18. Read that whole thing in its entirety. It's a beautiful scene, a powerful moment, beautiful moment. Might even bring one of those, one or two of those, but you're reading it. It's, it's a powerful moment. This is one man against 850 false prophets, man. One man against the world, man. Like, yo, and they heavy in their thing. Heavy in it. And they all in harmony. You know what I'm saying? Imagine the, the strength Elijah had to have. The faith that he had to have to be able to stand and withstand those 850 false prophets, let alone all the people of Yasharel and all the people of the false prophets that were watching bystanders observing the whole thing going down. So you got a lot happening. And it's all on this one man's shoulder. And he held it down. And how does it play out? Read it and find out. We're still here, so you know how it turned out. But how it plays play by play, it's a beautiful thing. Go into that. But where we're going is what happens after you transition. What happens after you transition? What happens immediately when we die? immediately when we transition, immediately at that moment of passing, at that moment of transition, what happens instantly? What's the first thing? What's the first experience? Because these things we're looking forward to, beautiful, glorious, and some of them terrifying. But what's that first experience? What's that immediate happening right after the transitional moment? To get that understanding, we gotta go to Fort Ezra, also known as Second Ezra. And we're gonna go into chapter seven and we're going to start off at verse 75. This is the book of 4 Ezra, or 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, starting at verse 75. I answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O Yahuwah, show this also to your servant, whether after death, as soon as every one of us yields up his soul, we shall be kept in rest until those times come when you will renew the creation, or whether we shall be tormented at once. So he's asking the question, what happens immediately after we die? Verse 76, he answered me and said, I will show you that also, but do not be associated with those who have sown scorn, nor number yourself among those who are tormented. Don't count yourself the evil one. And don't have yourself amongst those who show scorn for the word. For you have a treasure of works laid up with El Elyon, but it will not be shown to you until the last times. So look, this is Ezra inquiring about the afterlife, what's going to happen immediately after you die. And the angel says, don't count yourself among, I'll show it to you, but don't count yourself among one of the evil ones. For you have a whole bunch of works laid up in heaven you've done a lot of righteous works but it's not going to be shown to you your blessing won't be shown to you until this is all said and done until the last times 78 now concerning death the teaching is when the decisive decree has gone forth from el elyon the most high yah that a man shall die as the ruach ruach is spirit as the ruach leaves the body to return again to him who gave it First of all, it adores the glory of El Elyon. And if it is one of those who have, sown scorn, who have shown scorn and have not guarded the way of El Elyon and who have despised his Torah and who have hated those who fear Elohim, such spirits shall not enter into habitations but shall immediately wander about in torments, ever grieving and sad in seven ways. The first way. Because they have scorned the Torah of El Elyon, the second way, because they cannot know, they cannot now make a good repentance that they may live. The third way, they shall see the reward laid up for those who have trusted the covenants of El Elyon. The fourth way, they shall consider the torment laid up for themselves in the last days. The fifth way, they shall see how the habitations of the others are guarded by angels in profound quiet. The sixth way, they shall see how some of them will pass over into torments. The seventh way, which is worse than all the ways that have been mentioned, 
because they shall utterly waste away in confusion and be consumed with shame and shall wither with fear at seeing the glory of El Elyon before whom they sinned while they were alive and before whom they are to be judged in the last times. Now this is the order of those who have guarded the ways of El Elyon when they shall be separated from their mortal bodies. During the time that they lived in it, they laboriously served El Elyon and withstood danger every hour that they might guard the Torah of the Torah giver perfectly, protecting the way, trying to live a righteous life and doing their best to live the righteous life. This is their faith. Therefore, verse 90, therefore, this is the teaching concerning them. First of all, they shall see with great joy the glory of him who receives them for they shall have rest in seven orders. The first order, because they have striven with great effort to overcome the evil thought which was formed with them, that it might not lead them astray from life into death. The second order, because they see the perplexity in which the souls of the wicked wander and the punishment that awaits them. The third order, they see the witness which he who formed them bears concerning them that while they were alive they guarded the Torah which was given them in trust the fourth order they understand the rest which they now enjoy being gathered into their chambers and guarded by angels in profound quiet and the glory which awaits them in the last days the fifth order they rejoice that they now have escaped what is corruptible and shall inherit what is to come and besides they see the straits and toil from which they have been delivered and the spacious liberty which they are to receive and enjoy in immortality oh man imagine the sixth order when it is shown to them how their face is to shine like the sun and how they are to be made like the light of the stars being incorruptible from then on, the new body. The seventh order, which is greater than all that have been mentioned, because they shall rejoice with boldness and shall be confident without confusion and shall be glad without fear, for they hasten to behold the face of him whom they served in life and from whom they are to receive their reward when glorified. Oh man, we're gonna receive our reward straight from Mashiach directly imagine man 99 verse 99 this is the order of the souls of the righteous as henceforth is announced and the aforesaid are the ways of torment which those who would not give heed shall suffer hereafter verse 100 i answered and said will time therefore be given to the souls after they have been separated from the bodies to see what you have described to me? And he said to me, they shall have freedom for seven days so that during these seven days they may see the things of which you have been told and afterwards they shall be gathered in their habitations. I answered and said, if I have found favor in your sight, show further to me your servant whether on the day of judgment the righteous will be able to intercede for the wicked or to pray to El Elyon for them, fathers for sons or sons for parents, brothers for brothers, relatives for their kinsmen, or friends for those who are most dear. Can you pray and can you save your loved ones? Is what he's asking. Verse 104, he answered me and said, since you have found favor in my sight, I will show you this also. The day of judgment is decisive and displays to all the seal of truth is decisive it is what it is and displays to all the seal of truth all will know the truth this day just as now a father does not send his son or a son his father or a master his servant or a friend his dearest friend to be ill or sleep or eat or be healed in his place so no one shall ever pray for another on that day neither shall anyone lay a burden on another for then Everyone shall bear his own righteousness and unrighteousness. So no, 
Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the inhabitants of Sodom, and Moshe for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness, and Yahusha after him for Yasharel in the time of Akan, talking about Joshua, and Shemuel, Samuel, and David for the destruction, and Solomon for them that should come to the sanctuary, and Elijah for those that received rain, and for the dead that he might live, and Ezekiel for the people in the time of Kanshari, and many for many. And even so, verse 111, even so now, seeing corruption is grown up and wickedness increased and the righteous have prayed for the wicked, wherefore shall it not be so now also? Verse 112, he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory abides. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past, intemperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that has gotten the victory. I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying, it's the first and last thing I'm gonna ask, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness, and after death to look for punishment? O oh, Adam, what have you done? For though it was you that sinned, you are not fallen alone, but we all that come of you. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? What profit is it if we are promised immortality, but our whole life we work death? And that there is promised us an everlasting hope whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain and that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety whereas we have lived wickedly like what are good what good are these things if are these good things if we live a right unrighteous life or a wicked life verse 22 122 and that the glory of El Elyon is kept to defend them which have led a weary life whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all, and that there should be shown a pl 123, and that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endures forever, wherein is security and medicine, since we shall not enter it. Why would we be shown these things that we'll never be able to enter? For we have walked in unpleasant places, and that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness for we live for while we live and committed iniquity we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death 127 then he answered me and said this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight this is the condition of life this is why we were born this is the battle of life good over evil 128 let me read that again verse 127 then he answered me and said this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight that if he be overcome he shall suffer as you have said but if he gets the victory he shall receive the thing that I say for this is the life whereof Moshe spoke unto the people while he lived saying choose life that you may live. Choose life that you may live. Choose life that you may live. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me which have spoken unto them, that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction 
as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to Yeshua salvation So what do we see in here in 2nd Ezra 7, 75 through 130? What we're seeing is Ezra's asking a question to these angels, to the angel of the Lord. He's asking the angel of the Lord for insight. What happens after we die? Immediately after die and long term after we die. And immediately after we die, he sees that the unrighteous suffer in seven ways and the righteous rejoice in seven ways. And the unrighteous they suffer in ways, basically seeing the things and the beautiful things in which the righteous are going to inherit, but they will not. And he's asking, what's the point on them receiving that, seeing that, if they're not going to receive it? And then it's like, he said, that's the very reason why man is born. And this is the same battle that's been told to you from the very beginning. Moses, he testified to Moses, saying Moses brought it, they didn't listen to him. The prophets brought it, they didn't listen to him. His own son came, the son of Yah came. We didn't listen to him. So it's, it's uh, choose life that you may live. Nevertheless, they believed him not, nor yet the prophets after him, nor me, which has spoken unto them, that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction. Like they shouldn't have to go for that. And if they had that as their tear it in front of them, knowing that the destruction is ahead of them, that should inspire them to live righteously but it hasn't so justice will be served we get our just due we get our just due